I had a student recently tell me that they thought that the Scrum Master role would soon be extinct. And I thought to myself and I said, you know, I get what they're thinking, but I don't get it. So let me explain what I mean by that. When you think about a team, a Scrum team, it's supposed to be self-managing, right? So if it's self-managing, this is the exact question I got. If it's self-managing, why do you need a Scrum Master? And the Scrum Master... I think that this is the confusion. So so bear with me. Here we go. I think what this boils down, boils down to is a difference between understanding of responsibilities and accountabilities, which I know sounds interesting. I think that the list of Scrum Master responsibilities is evolving, but I think the list of accountabilities has remained constant. So I think it's a matter of understanding the difference between the two. If you look at the news, especially in some of the tech companies, the the Scrum Master has lost its luster. Huge layoffs, people getting rid of their Scrum Masters. People are bringing in delivery managers or relabeling it to an agile project manager. I mean, I've just seen so many things. And it's not so much that the organization is trying to diminish or get rid of scrum masters it's more that they're looking for the recipe of what's going to work what's going to be successful and what they've found is that when they try to apply scrum out of the box that they're not getting the result they want so the question becomes how can they modify what how can they give a reboot based on what's going on and get a recipe that works so Let's get back to the basics first and talk about why this may have happened. And this is interesting because there's a ton of things that led to this predicament. Starting at the top, too many certification bodies created the appearance that putting a certificate first was more important than experience. Now, while I can tell you as a certified Scrum trainer who certifies people in Scrum, (laughs) certification is important as long as it's from the right instructor. But if you for a minute believe that you could just go to any instructor and get the same certification, that's not true. And certification never replaces experience. This is why it's mandatory to have experience before you get advanced level certification through Scrum Alliance. All right. Another thing is many people are saying, I'm hiring a Scrum Master. And then the first thing to do is give them all the accountabilities of a project manager, meaning that they don't have alignment between the roles and accountabilities. This is a very high item on my 12-step program. In fact, this is number three on the 12-step program. Uh, I make sure you have a clear, role in del- clear delineation and ideation behind all the roles and responsibilities. And that's something that typically doesn't happen. So I think that it's important to make sure that we understand what a Scrum Master really does. How about this person becomes a team manager rather than being a servant leader? Or... They fall into the pit of making administration of JIRA their primary responsibility. I've seen that before, where you become the JIRA wrangler for a very large group, and everybody's like, oh, if you want to do that, well, more power to you. Nobody else wants to do that. So they'll push you into that responsibility and let you have the same title. Or you're handcuffing agility in favor of following something so loosely that is a framework that you're preventing people from being agile. I know that sounds weird, but it happens, right? happens often or what about when you're driving teams to deliver more better faster cheaper go and you start introducing a walmart model where quality suffers cost suffers it just turns into a lot of nonsense or you start hiring people to be a scrum master without having a technical background or and without the and or without the product know-how so you're, you're backing yourself into a corner or you're separating a Scrum Master from the day-to-day responsibilities and accountabilities of the team. You're, you're putting a barrier between them. All of those things can cause grief, right? So if all those things are happening, it's no surprise that Scrum Masters have lost their course, that they're not doing what they need to do, and that they don't understand how to fix it. So this is just like good diet and exercise. To become a really good Scrum Master, you got to put in the sets. You got to put in the reps, right? You got to get in there and get things done. What you have to realize right out of the gate is that when you first, when you're first ordained a scrum master, nobody's going to like you. And, and that that's part of the job. 
it sounds harsh, but it really is. It's it, when you first start doing this, you're not going to have a clue what you're doing. And your primary responsibility is going to be to go to the team and figure out what they're doing wrong and report it back to leadership, which is not exactly where you want to be, right? But if you are a person who really understands the accountability, then what you quickly realize is that your instincts about what you should do are oftentimes the exact opposite of what you need to do. And that's when you your instincts kick in and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. My gut reaction was to do X, which is usually true. But then when I think about it, Y is a much better option than X. And the only reason I was feeling X is because X was a simple way to solve a problem. So, so a lot of times that happens, right? And you get stuck with a wrong move or a good, better, best. This is a good idea, but this is a better idea, right? But the team should be quick to put you in your place and say, hey, no, we need to move in a different direction. We need to pivot, right? And sometimes you can make those decisions yourself. Sometimes you need to seek a mentor, somebody who knows more than you do for help. Somebody who's been around the block. When you get somebody who can take the situation and say, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. That means that the person in a mentor position has a deep level of experience. They've they've worked with you for some time and, and they're able to guide you and give you some some wherewithal about why we got to this point or how we got to this point and what we could do to get out of it, right? So it's important for you to make sure that you understand who you should be working closely with and how that person is going to impact your ability to do better. Yes? All right, well, let's just break this down. Uh, There are multiple ways that Scrum Masters can change the world, (laughs) but I thought it would be fun to give you a list of four Four bullet points, uh, four four ways a Scrum Master can pivot <laughs> and become indispensable. So how can a Scrum Master really make sure the company knows and everyone else knows that they are not just a fly-by-night, uh, let's figure it out as we go kind of person? Number one on my list, help team members learn how to self-organize in different ways. This is important. When I say different ways, sometimes it's I'm going to do this, sometimes we'll do this together, other times it's you do this and I'll check back in. And I think that good scrum masters or great scrum masters are already doing this. But other people have had uh, complications doing these things. So I think it's just a matter of controlling how you behave as a scrum master and making sure that you're not being too passive in your stance, that you're actively engaged but that you are giving a team to nudge when they need to, but you're also not afraid to roll up the sleeves and get your hands dirty when you need to as well. You need to show the team how to decide and act with safety. You need to show how to focus on finishing one thing at a time and honoring whip. You need to model behavior for transparency, especially when things go wrong. You need to show how your own improvement makes things better. You need to teach the team techniques and specializations for collaborating and talking with each other. You need to act with uh, act with edge and push through obstacles instead of avoid them. You need to show how to own and end delivery of value, not just a small part. And you need to really know how to care for solving customer needs and not just simply getting on a horse and building stuff, right? Because there are lots of organizations where the development team gets a list of things they need to do. And the Scrum Master thinks their job is to make sure those things get done. And while that's true, if it's contrary to what we really need, then somebody needs to have that conversation with the product owner, right? But those behaviors I just described are tricky, but if you can master them, it's going to help the team grow very quickly. All right, let's go to number two. Number two is listen for impediments out of the team's control and get work and get those remo- get, getting those removed right away. Because there are going to be things that the team just cannot control. Things that are outside of their comfort zone. And that's totally cool. It's fine. When it happens, though, we want to make sure that um, that if the team has something that they need you to resolve, it, I'll put it this way. Needing a refill on your bottle of water or a coffee mug is not an obstacle that should be resolved by a scrum master. The scrum master should not reply. Would you like, how many creams or sugars would you like with your coffee? That's ridiculous, right? The team should not just throw all their little needs into your lap and, or, and you need to run around fixing everything. You're not, you're not a fixer upper, right? The team needs to have some kind of way to, to understand that they have the control, 
right? To fix many roadblocks on our own and that it's us empowering them to do so as opposed to us enabling them to continue to make bad choices and bad mistakes. So that's important. And, um, you know, I think that when there's stuff that's outside of the team's control, like something stuck in an approval queue or extra things that we're doing just aren't adding any value or decisions we're waiting on others to make, uh, decisions waiting on others to make. If, if, you, if the team it can't make the decision themselves and somebody else has to make the decision, then you need to step in and say, okay, let me see what I can get. Unrealistic expectations on timelines, that happens. No space for the team to improve or learn. External pressures to start too much at once. Dependencies on other teams that need breaking. Uh, customers or stakeholders that aren't available to the team. There's so many things that you can do to help, but you need to identify those, right? Okay, let's go to number three. Anticipating problems and helping the team avoid them. So heading things off the pass, right? Knowing what's going to happen. Tell the team to carry on that you got it. Spend time with leadership when necessary. Meet with the team and management together if necessary to get things revol- resolved and to show a next step forward so that we are using grow, goals, reality, opportunities, and will to show a path moving forward. And then, of course, the act of spotting a problem per, problem precursors will only come with practice and experience. You're not going to be able to find all the things that are going to be root cause until you practice and try and try again, right? Okay. And finally, number four, become equipped to radiate information about the team's work. Many people want to know what they're doing and how they're doing. You should be able to create these visual radiators. So form a goal-oriented roadmap. Uh, of our now, next, and later focus. Create a product learning canvas to explain uh, the team's journey and their outcome, uh, their outcomes that they hope to achieve and where they're going and how they're leveraging an outcome-based journey to get to where they need to be. Construct a story map uh, so that you can inform on how we are solving users' needs, you know, directly correlated to how users are using your product or service. Uh, do whatever you need to do to show here are blockers and this is how we're overcoming them, right? If we can do those things, those are going to be the the help, the magic that we need. But don't think information radiators fall on your shoulders to create alone. This should be a team effort, a group effort to help make sure that you have all the things you need to help you master your craft. So keep transparency high, focus on self-organization and do the things you need to do. And I can assure you, if you do, that you'll have a much better agile experience. That's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a topic, learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. As always, stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.